Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is top 8 best practices for writing CSS in web applications. These are the must know for developers and I am sharing this as part of my experience that I have learned over a period of 10 plus years. So let's get right into it and I am sure you will find these extremely helpful as you write your own CSS. A quick word before we get started. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's a fundamental language for creating visually appealing and interactive websites. CSS is what defines the look and feel of the web pages. Everything right from your font, color, layout, um, look and feel, anything, uh, the font, size, border, padding, margin, box, everything, CSS controls it. Whenever work you work in a real enterprise setup, chances are that in HTML you just have the structure, everything else is maintained through standard CSS framework or a typography. In this tutorial, we will learn some of the best practices for writing CSS code that will help you create maintainable, scalable and efficient CSS code. Let's get started. The first uh, is the modular approach. I love this piece. Uh, a well-organized CSS code makes it easy to maintain and update the code over a period of time. You can organize CSS in a modular approach, right? Now, when I say modular approach, I'm talking about the modern CSS frameworks which uses CSS preprocessors like LESS or SAS, right? So basically, we break down the CSS into smaller reusable components. Bootstrap, which is a famous framework, uses that approach. If you look at the source code, you would see that they have separate files, CSS, SCSS files for each of the separate components like buttons, forms, alerts, navigation, etc, etc. When you are designing your own CSS for your applications, make sure that you take out that code, put it in a separate file. That way it's small, it's reusable, it's easy to maintain. This approach will help you make it more scalable and make it more reusable. Changing any CSS will not be a big task when you use modular approach. Any small change, you don't have to do deep dive into 10,000 lines of code. If you're working with components, you just have to go to that component CSS file, update it or modify it. The amount of time that it takes to update will be drastically reduced because you know exactly where to you're making change and it will not have an overall impact on your website. So next time, when you are, have a question or question mark in mind before writing CSS for your application, see if you can use modular approach and start implementing that in your projects. The second is to follow a consistent naming convention. This is something that I learned very early um, in my uh, development days. I have now close to 10 plus years of experience, but I can tell you when I started out, my team lead helped me follow this particular best practice, which is following a good naming convention makes it to write the code is also beautiful to change, to modify and to maintain, right? So we, every, every company has some kind of a coding standards. So I'm sure that naming convention will be one of them. When you follow something, follow it consistently. That's very, very important. Choose any convention, any naming convention is fine. But as long as we all as a team, follow the same consistently, your project becomes beautiful, your code becomes beautiful. Use a CSS preprocessor. Now, with so many preprocessors that are available in the market, you should never write native CSS anymore. CSS processors offer so many beautiful features like variables, nesting, mixing, media queries, that you can really write cleaner code, more efficient code quickly. You can do nesting of all the things so you don't have to spread the code all over the place. If you're not using preprocessor, please talk to your team lead, your manager, get it in place because without which you're living in really two, 2000s, right? You're not in modern world. Preprocessors will help you write reusable code, reduce the amount of code and also provide beautiful, powerful features like conditional statements, nesting, mixings, variables, much, much more. Use a reset or normalize style sheet. Now, this is something that if you are starting a project from scratch, first thing you should do is create a reset or a normalize style sheet. Because 
different browsers have different default styles. You need to reset all of them so that they are all consistent and uniform, right? So if first thing before you start any project or if you do, if you already started a project and don't have a reset or a normalize, have one. That would help you reset all the basic values and variable values to a default one so that it will behave consistent across all different browsers. Avoid using too many classes and IDs, right? Like I said, if you use preprocessor, give one ID to that section, have all the code nested inside it. That way you have only one ID defined and not have too many classes which will be bloated and spread across all the files. Very hard to find, very hard to manage. Over a period of time, it would drive you nuts. I have seen that, I've been there, so I'm telling you, avoid using classes and IDs. Just target the elements with already existing IDs if possible. If not, if there are many things that you are targeting like elements, use class name. The next, again, um, use meaningful names other than coding standards and those things. You, as for writing CSS, the CSS names itself, right, should be more meaningful, should be more descriptive in its own way. Okay, instead of just reflecting, saying that first element or first block, I've seen code like that. So instead use main content, header block, something like that, which is more meaningful. Okay, this is not part of the coding standards. Coding standards are different. These are giving meaningful name to the variables itself, right? Like IDs and classes. So make sure that you give some proper meaningful names, which are easy to understand, reduces the risk of collisioning. That means some people should not have already defined that class or ID somewhere else. Avoid using inline styles. I keep telling this to my junior developers all the time. Inline styling is hard to read, to maintain, to debug. When something goes wrong in production, you first thing we do is go into our JS and CSS and check that. We hardly go into HTML to find out that there is an inline styling. So if you are writing in line styling, I know it sometimes you will feel tempted to write because it's just small change, but over a period of time, it will become your headache. Trust me, I promise you that. So avoid using inline styles as much as possible. One or two places in a project where you cannot avoid, I can understand that let that be. But for most part, avoid inline styling, always use external style sheet. The last one, I, this is something that I keep telling uh, everybody and my tech lead used to tell me all the time when I started out. Uh, so use comments, right? Comments are a great way to document your CSS code, especially, especially when you work with CSS preprocessors, things can get little complicated in terms of the nesting or the conditional statements, etc. Again, you don't have to add comments for every single line of code only complex where you made a decision of certain way if you click styling decisions that's where you will add the comments thank you so much for joining in this episode i hope you are learning from this series from my channel please do keep that motivation through your comments in my channel that really encourages me uh, to perform better to bring you more tutorials i have also shared best practices for html css and bootstrap please do check them out I'm sure you will love them. Thank you again for joining. Keep learning. Keep growing.